Okay, so we are going to continue with our discussion on statistical data and um, why we would want to or how we can use that information um, within surveys. I want you to write down these particular words in your notes. A parameter is a measure that describes a characteristic of a population and a statistic is a measure that describes a characteristic of a sample. I don't even know that some of you have even heard of the word parameter before, at least not in terms of mathematically describing a parameter. But a parameter is something that is only used when you are discussing a population, whereas a statistic is going to be a characteristic of a sample. I would say that 99 to 100 percent of the time we are always talking about a statistic. We have done some type of survey, we have done some type of observational study, we have done something where we are just using a small part of our population in order to determine what's going to happen. Now I am going to ask that you can distinguish the difference between a population and a sample. And with that, we can look at these examples that are right here. If Jerry's Math Club wants to compare their SAT scores to the scores of all the students who took the SAT, now you need to be careful, we are just talking about his math club. If we're just going to work with his math club, is the math club a sample or is it the entire population? It is going to be a sample. If the tennis team wants to compare their first serve percentages with each other, the difference between number five and six, number five, we're comparing our scores of the team to the entire population. Here, we are just comparing our scores or our percentages with each other. So that is going to be represented by a population. It is not a sample because we are not comparing with a larger set of data. We are just looking at these scores. So the scores are actually our population. If Jennifer conducts an online survey on political opinions, is that going to be a sample or a population? Is she going to talk to every single person in the United States and ask them about their political opinions? So that is going to be sample. And Veronica compares the student-teacher ratios of all of the schools in her county. That's going to be a population. Good, Carrie. That's a population because we are talking about every single school. She's not leaving anybody out. Are we good? So the difference between sample and population comes into, play, comes into play because honestly you cannot say that if you do find a percentage for a sample that it is going to be the exact same percentage for the entire population. Yes sir. It's still going to be a if you're if you're talking about in this which one are you talking about okay Veronica compares the student teacher ratios of all of the schools in her county the entire county is your population granted now if if she said that I wanted to compare my my school to the county then it would be considered a sample. If we're trying to find the margin of sample error, and this is going to be on your test next Friday, 
we are going to have to calculate it, and we can calculate this using plus or minus 1 over the square root of n. n is the number of people in the sample. Now, I would like you to write down margin of sampling error and it is equal to plus or minus 1 divided by the square root of n. If a random survey of 2,148 people said that 58% football is their favorite sport, we can calculate the margin of sampling error. We are going to say plus or minus 1 divided by the square root, and in this case, what is the amount of my, how many people were in the sample? 2,148 people. Every single person needs to get out their calculator and they need to find 1 divided by the square root of 2,148. We are going to round to four decimals. Anybody want to impress me and tell me what four decimal places is? Thomas? Ten thousandths. Ten thousandths. Hun tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So we are going to round do we have a plus or minus on our calculator? No, you can't put the plus or minus in your calculator. You are going to do 1 divided by the square root of 2,148, and you should get a decimal of 0 0.216. Does it round to 6? So from here, this is a decimal. We are working with percent. So how do I convert my decimal to a percent? What? Multiply by 100. We are actually going to move this decimal over two places. And so if it is 0 0.0216 as a decimal, then that is going to be plus or minus 2.16%. Now what that tells us is that if we know it, our survey said 58% of people chose football as their favorite, if we truly surveyed the entire population, our range should be 58 minus 2.16 to 58 plus 2.16. So the true percentage would be 0.84 to what? There you go. So it's going to give us a range which would be more appropriate in terms of our population because you cannot say with certainty that if you did your population the entire, if you surveyed the entire population, that it would be 58% as well. There has to be some sort of account for error in terms of your population. Now, obviously, we're not even talking about bias versus unbiased. What, you know, I joked, I said, if I was trying to figure out how to get more money for my football team, and I went to ask who was more interested in coming to a high school football game, a great place for me to do a survey would be the parking lot outside the Panther Stadium right before a game. Because probably every person in that parking lot is going to say that they, or, or the majority of them, are going to be interested in football. Or if you surveyed the North Met parking lot before the game. However, if you stood in front of a dance studio and did the same survey, do you think you're going to get the same results? That's where bias versus unbiased comes into play. But we also need to take into account that even if with the 
perfectly unbiased sample, it's still not going to be 100% representative of our population. Here's another one. I want to find my margin of error with 3,247 people. So it's going to be plus or minus 1 divided by the square root of 3,247. That is going to be equal to what? 0 0.0175 if we round. Good. Thank you, Carrie. And now to change that to a percentage, I'm going to move that over two places. So it's actually going to be plus or minus 1.75%. So the actual margin of sampling error would be represented as plus or minus 1.75%. Our interval means we are going to take the 41% that they found in their sample and we are going to subtract the 1.75 and then we are going to add the 1.75. So my interval is going to be, sorry, 39.25 to... It, it, correct, same difference. It's going to fall within that range. Or we assume that our population would fall within that range. Now, so far it may not mean a whole lot to you, but let's put it this way. If I did a random survey of 10 people at our school as to whether or not they come to class with their graphing calculator each day and my random survey found that 70 percent of our students say that they come to class every day with their graphing calculator. Now if I come down here and find the margin of error for only 10 people that's going to be plus or minus 1 over the square root of 10. Find that out. What is one over the square one divided by the square root of ten? Three one round keep give me two more decimal places. Three one six two. So if we have zero point three one six two and we move it over two decimal places, then that means my margin of error is going to be 31.62%. So that means I can have a population size, if I subtract 31.62 from 70, that is going to take me to 38.38, did I do my math right? All the way to 101.62, does that make any sense? No. Because Surveying 10 people, is that a true representative of the entire population? No. Now, if I told you to go and survey 100 people, in my eyes, surveying 100 people is a pretty significant task. However, what kind of margin of sample? Like, it's still going to give us a pretty large margin from one side to the other, correct? So I hope that you are seeing that even though you can do a sample, there is a significant difference between sampling 50 people and your how accurate your survey is compared to sampling 5,000 people.